Hello, Valley View Vikings. I just wanted to welcome you into my home classroom once again to read you a story. Today is a story about one of my favorite scientists. My husband, Mr. Blackstone, is also a scientist. He is what's called a physicist. A physicist is a type of scientist that studies the way that things move. And Mr. Blackstone likes to study things that move in the sky. When we study things that move, those scientists are called physics, physicists, and the science is called physics. And so he likes to see how things move in the sky. Now, I'm not just talking about clouds in the sky. I'm talking about way further into space. We're talking about planets, suns, stars, all of that. And when we're talking about all of those things together, we call it the cosmos. And today we're going to talk about a scientist named Carl Sagan who studied the cosmos. <laughs> Star Stuff, Carl Sagan and the Mysteries of the Cosmos by Stephanie Roth Sisson. Inside most picture books, you will find what's called end paper. And I actually really like end paper. I think it's fun. Some of it can be fun like this, where we're seeing for this one, we've got lots of stars and planets. And some can just be plain, and that's okay too. Imagination will often carry us to worlds that never were, but without it, we can go nowhere. So while we're stuck inside together, let's use our imaginations. That was a quote from Carl Sagan. So this, do you see that there's a picture in the stars? When we look at a picture in the stars, we call it a constellation. And so we find a pattern in the stars that we can see makes up a picture. And that is a constellation. In the Milky Way galaxy, take a look. This is our, our galaxy. Do you see that red dot? Do you see it? That tiny little spot right there? Guess what that is? That is our sun. That tiny little red spot right there is our sun where we live in our solar system. Here it is. We're getting closer. Our sun in a neighborhood of stars on the third planet from our sun. So here is our neighborhood. And then we are at the third planet right here. Oops, right there. In a big city, Brooklyn, New York, in a small apartment, lived a boy named Carl. New York City is on the east coast of the United States. It's pretty far from Ohio, but not, not too far. Carl was curious about everything. He found the world around him astonishing. That means really interesting or surprising. He liked it. His imagination took him out of his neighborhood. Announcing the 1939 World's Fair. Come see the world of tomorrow. The World's Fair was kind of like the State Fair, but a lot bigger. So people came from all over the world to show the new inventions that they made, the new food that they cooked, and it was a pretty big deal, but it was pretty cool too. The World's Fair was like nothing Carl had seen before. There was a mechanical man. Wow, we! And a time capsule filled with messages to the future. There's our mechanical man. And here is our time capsule. If you are going to put something in a time capsule for somebody else to read in 100 years, what would you put? What would you want to say? Carl thought about the stars hanging down like light bulbs on black wires. What are they? What do you think that stars are? Do you see how he's using his imagination? And by using his imagination, he is out of his house and in the stars in his imagination. In 
In the morning, he set out to discover the answer. A book of stars, please. It was the wrong book. When she came back with the right book, Carl's heart beat faster with every page he turned. Why do you think Carl's heart would beat faster when he got the right book? What do you think he's feeling? Do you think that he's feeling scared because he got the right book? Do you think he's feeling excited because he got the right book? I'm thinking he's probably excited because he's going to get the answers he wants. Our sun is a big ball of fiery gas held together by gravity. Nine planets, including Earth, orbit around it in our solar system. So we actually only have eight planets. We used to have nine. But Pluto is actually very small, and so we can't count it as a planet, so we count it as a dwarf planet. So it's still part of the family. It's just the littlest one of our family. Each star is a sun. If you traveled into space for many years and then looked back at our sun, it would look like a dim star. Wowee! That's pretty cool. Car... Carl read that, in, that many scientists suspected that other stars have planets circling them too. So this is what the sun looks like. Do you see that it looks like it's on fire? Because it is. It absolutely is. And this is what, our, what a star looks like. Other stars can be different colors, but that's what the sun looks like. And then here's what it looks like from our view when we are looking at the sun. So it looks similar, but maybe not the same. Carl was curious. He imagined what he would find if he could travel to other stars. And then Carl wrote down the stuff that he was imagining, that he was curious about. He wrote down his questions. One of the most important things that a scientist can do is to write things down. You can watch and that's okay, but it's not science unless you write it down. He read stories written by people who imagined what life would be like on other planets. His favorite character, John Carter, could stand with his arms outstretched and wish himself to Mars. Can you find Mars? Do you see the red spot that is Mars? You can see Mars in our sky, usually with just your eyes, but you can use binoculars or a telescope too. But nothing happened. Carl set out to learn more. He studied life and space and became... What do you think Carl is going to be? Dr. Carl Sagan. Carl longed to know what other planets were really like. He worked with other scientists to send mechanical explorers to investigate planets that are close to us. They took pictures and gathered data and sent them back to Earth. So, even though it's a machine, that data, they're writing it down. That is science. Now, they said that his name was Dr. Carl Sagan. But I don't see that he's helping any sick people. Why is that? A doctor can be somebody that spends a lot of time, a lot of extra time in school. So a doctor is not always somebody that's helping sick people by checking their ears and their temperature and everything. A doctor is someone that spent a lot of time studying something that they really are interested in. So Carl Sagan got his doctorate by studying physics. And he studied the sky, and that's what Mr. Blackstone is doing. It gave Carl goosebumps to think about what he had learned about the stars, planets, and the beginnings of life. He wanted everyone to understand so they could feel like a part of the stars, as he did. So he went on television. Wowee! They look pretty excited. The very matter that makes us up was generated long ago and far away in red giant stars. 
Did you hear that there's a star that's a different color? What color did he say that star was? The earth and every living thing are made of star stuff. Do you recognize that from the title of our book? Star stuff. The stars made the ingredients of life. Could those ingredients have resulted in life somewhere else too? Hmm. Carl and his fellow scientists got ready to launch the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft on a grand tour of the outer solar system to gather more pictures and data. After that, they were bound for the stars. A marvelous idea gripped Carl. Take a look at our solar system. Do you see where Earth is? Right there, that tiny little red dot. And over here, we've got Voyager. And Voyager, I think, is out past Pluto now. It's very, very far. A message from our world could be attached to each spaceship, like a time capsule and taken beyond our star. Greetings. So greetings are something that someone says. So they would be saying it in hello in different languages. Hello is English. Shalom is Hebrew. Um, hola is Spanish. So they had a lot of different languages, some that we don't even speak anymore. They found how to say hello and they recorded it. We thought it would be impolite not to say hello. I think they're right. They also had sounds sounds of the earth so things like birds chirping babies crying what water sounds like all the things that we're used to that maybe someone who doesn't live on earth may not be they have music because our music is very different all over the world it depends on where you're coming from they have somebody's heartbeat because if it's, if it's somebody that, you know, from another planet, an alien, something like that, they may not have the same body that we do and may be different. So maybe they might not have the same heartbeat that we do. Maybe they do. We don't know. They also had pictures. Because having sounds is great. But if you don't see what you're talking about, it makes it really hard. Do you see this gold circle in the middle? That's called a record. And a record is something that people used to use to, to play music and sounds. And they made their record a very special way. This is the record. Do you see all of those lines and everything? What that is, is that's actually the instructions for how to build a record player so somebody knows how to play this if they ever find it out in space. The twin voyagers rocketed to space carrying their friendly greeting. Here we go. They traveled through our solar system and continued farther than any other spaceships have gone before. A curious man, made of star stuff, launched a spacecraft on an adventure to explore beyond our neighborhood of planets. As the voyagers continue their journey into interstellar space, they are carried by the imagination of a boy named Carl. Wowie! Do you see Voyager? Wowie! Does it look maybe like it's upside down? Which way does Voyager go? Hmm. Did you know that in space, there's no such thing as upside down? Because when we think about upside down, we're thinking about what goes towards the center of the earth for gravity. That doesn't exist in space. There's no center of the earth in gravity because you're not on earth anymore, right? So here's the end paper. We've got another constellation, a drawing in the stars of Carl, and then we have an Another one of Voyager over here.
So that is the story about Carl Sagan. I want to show you a picture of what he really looked like. This is what he really looked like. Dr. Carl Sagan. And he even had his own TV show called Cosmos. And you might have heard of a scientist called Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson is also doing Cosmos, and he's also a physicist. When he was a kid, just a small kid, he got to meet Carl Sagan. And then he grew up to be just like Carl Sagan, which I thought was cool. The one thing that I want to leave you with is a quote. It is my favorite quote. Remember, that is a quote is something that somebody says. So Carl Sagan said this about reading and about books. What an astonishing thing a book is. It's a flat object made from a tree with flexible parts on which are imprinted lots of funny dark squiggles. But one glance at it and you're inside the mind of another person. Maybe someone dead for thousands of years. Across the millennia, an author is speaking clearly and silently inside your head directly to you. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions, binding together people who never knew each other, citizens of distant epics. Books break the shackles of time. A book is proof that humans can work magic. I think it's pretty cool that Carl Sagan knew so much about how we read too. Think about it. Somebody who's just reading words from a book can tell you what to see in your head. You can get a picture just from what somebody else is reading to you from a book. And I thought that's pretty cool. Keep reading and I'll see you later for another story. Bye-bye.